I don't know if I'm supposed to be telling you guys this, but I've used it and it works. Hey everyone, welcome, welcome back to my channel. It's a girl, Alicia V. Today's video is a highly, highly anticipated one. You guys have been asking me a plethora of questions on my methods on how I exactly get an A in anatomy and physiology and how I study exactly in nursing school to get my high GPA. Well, I'm gonna answer all your questions today, okay? No worries. So if you're interested and you really wanna know how to get good grades in nursing school, keep on watching. Well, if you guys have not seen my how to get an A anatomy class and how to get a high grade in nursing school, make sure you guys check out these two videos first because those two videos preface what I'm about to tell you guys right now. The very common question that I've gotten underneath my comments in my videos is if I can show the apps, the tactics, the study notes, anything that I use to actually get the A. So what I use to take my notes is GoodNotes. I do have a video up on how I take my notes on the GoodNotes app, and I also did include it in that video as well, but I could dig a little deeper for you guys if that is what you guys want. Well, since I last made this video, GoodNotes has made some upgrades, which I absolutely love. My favorite upgrade is now you can record the lecture and write down at the same time. So whenever you go back into your notes and you actually reread your notes and stuff, you know exactly what you wrote down when in the lecture so that way you don't have to try to remember and be like, oh my gosh, I don't remember what I wrote, what is this for? It's all recorded on GoodNotes and I absolutely love that. Notability had that feature a long time and that was like the tussle between the two apps, but now that GoodNotes has it, it's amazing. So whenever I make my notes in GoodNotes, especially for anatomy and physiology, I try to make them as simple as possible because number one, anatomy and physiology is very course heavy. There's a lot of information that you have to know. And for me, I get very overwhelmed when there's so much words and information on the paper. So I like to simplify it and make sure I just put the main important points. So how I do it is I make a heading and then I make a subheading and underneath that subheading, I have all the points in short form for that topic. That way when I go back, I just have to memorize or I just have to understand and know those sub points and then I could expand on it later on. Another thing about GoodNotes I absolutely love is the drop or the grab and drop option on it. So for me, I'm a very visual learner and obviously anatomy and physiology is very visual. So whenever I learn a topic, say for instance, I'm learning about the heart, I go on Google, I split my iPad, so that way I have my good notes on one side and the internet on the other side, and I pick up a picture of the heart, and all I have to do is just hold it and drag it onto the GoodNotes app. I don't have to save the picture, I don't have to cut and paste the picture or nothing. I just automatically hold that picture, drag it onto the GoodNotes app, and it's in there. Also, another great thing is if you have a multiple pictures that you want to add onto that document, you can just grab the picture and then just basically drag all of them at once and then drop it into the GoodNotes app. And that is a feature that I utilize a lot. It just makes it so much easier. I don't have to draw it. I just have to write my notes on the picture. That way I know exactly what I'm learning and it's always going to be there. So another resource that I use other than the textbook is YouTube. You guys, everyone knows about YouTube. Obviously, if you're watching this, you know about YouTube, but YouTube helps. Simple Nursing, Nurse Mike, amazing. Um, Nurse Sarah RN, fantastic. I recently learned about Wendy Riggs. She makes learning anatomy and physiology or science in general so much fun. I utilized her for my whole entire class and I also stumbled upon um, Crash Course, I believe it's called. If I'm wrong, I'll just correct it here, but Crash Course puts everything in simplicity and just makes it into like a two or three minute video and it's so colorful and it has all the the pictures on it so that way you don't forget. It's almost like a pigmonic, but video. But those are the four main YouTube channels that I go on whenever I study for anatomy and physiology. I just type in the topic that I'm on and a whole bunch of videos come up. I just basically compare it to my notes and if I'm missing any important information, I add it on as well. And lastly, I go on Quizlet and Brainscape. You guys, if you know people who previously taken your course, they basically put the questions and the answers on Quizlet and Brainscape. I don't know if I'm supposed to be telling you guys this, but I've used it and it works, okay, you guys? But this is my last resort, meaning after I've read the textbook, after I've read my own notes, after I've gone on YouTube and any other resources, I go on Quizlet and Brainscape. I try to do this 
without looking at my textbooks for the answers. So that way, if I know I got it right, I know the information. And if I got it wrong, I basically highlight that section that I need to restudy and then I take over the test again. But Quizlet and Brainscape is your friend. So hopefully I answered that question. My tactics and my apps that I use is my textbook. I use GoodNotes, I use YouTube, and I use Brainscape and Quizlet. Another question that I've gotten was about my objectives and if you should write the objectives first or last. You guys, the objectives tell you exactly what you are studying in that section. So my recommendation is to read the objectives first, write the objectives in questions, and then read the passage underneath it. So that way you don't have to be reading the whole thing. What I like to do is if I'm looking at the objectives, I would put the objectives in a question form and I'll find that one or two or three sentences that actually answer that objective. And when I find those questions, I read around it and see if any important information meshes with that answer. Make sure you understand that core concept. When you understand that core concept, you are able to add on little by little by little without feeling overwhelmed. So this next question is asking me about my time spacing and my flashcards. To be honest with you guys, I haven't used flashcards yet in my RM program. I've only used flashcards for my pharmacology course and I haven't taken pharmacology yet. Pharmacology is actually coming up this semester. What I did, I made it really simple. I grouped all of the medication classes together. Say for instance, actually no, I lied. What I did was I grouped all of the organs together. So for dealing with the heart, I have the heart medications, the lungs, I have the lung medications, liver, liver, kidneys, kidneys, and so forth and so forth, right? Um, and then after that, I break it down. So say for instance, we're doing the circulatory system, I break it down into different categories. So I break it down into diuretics. I break it down to beta blockers, calcium inhibitors, um, angiotensin, um, what else do I have? I break it down into, they say ACE inhibitors? <laughs> so I just break it down into each class and then it just makes everything so much easier because each class has their different um, functions, the different contraindications, and things that you have to look out for. So that is very important. I will go deeper into my flashcards when I actually take my pharmacology class, but that is how I organize it. Time spacing, I'm guessing you're talking about like how much time I study and how much time I take a break and then go back to studying. If that's what you're talking about, I use a Pomodoro technique or the Pomodoro um, feature on my phone. You can also do it on the computer as well. But what I like to do is I like to study for at least 45 minutes straight and take a 15 minute break. That way I have a whole hour that I just got information from. And within that 15 minute break, I do not touch anything. I get away from my computer. I get away from my school studies. I go for a walk. Um, sometimes I go on my phone, but anything that's not related to nursing school, that is what I do within the first break and then I go right back into my studies after the 15 minutes is done. So you can do different um, time length. You don't have to do 45 and 15. You can do 25 and 10. You can do 30 and 5. Whatever works for you, whatever works best and you actually stay concentrated within that study time, that is what you need to use. So lastly, once you're done reviewing that section, that topic, that chapter, you want to do a brain dump. So you come back from your 15 minute break you just brain dump everything that you learned on that topic. This is probably my favorite part of studying because it shows myself how much I've retained. And mind you, just because you wrote everything does not mean you retained it. You have short term memory, okay? Because I'm pretty sure tomorrow you're gonna have less information on that whiteboard. So that's why brain dumping to me is so important. I write down everything that I've studied without looking at my notes. This is the most important part of brain dumping. You have to write down everything that you remember from studying without looking at your notes. So that way when you go back and review your brain dump, you see, okay, I missed this important step. Let me review it. Or I wrote this part and I memorized it well, let me move on. This ensures that you cover everything that you've studied and you are on track with your studying plan. And then once you're done brain dumping, you go back to your objective questions and you ask yourself that question and see how in depth you can answer that question again without looking at your books. If you answer it thoroughly and you feel confident, move on, you guys. There's, not, there's nothing worse than staying on that topic because you feel unprepared. The longer you stay on that topic, the less time you have for other topics, and then you're gonna feel overwhelmed, and then it's gonna be a whole burden. So if you feel like you satisfactorily know, know that topic and you answer that question, move on.
Now, if you feel like you are behind in studying, chances are you're probably not. <laughs> Nursing school makes you feel like you're behind 24 seven. So don't worry, don't stress, just take your time and just study that material. All of these tips that I've given you, you could use them honestly for the whole nursing school program, but not only for anatomy and physiology, you could use them for pharmacology, patho, um, care in geriatrics, peds, med surge, um, assessments, all those classes that you take in school, you could honestly use this whole method and it will be a breeze, you guys. Honestly, thinking back, my LPN school, if I had used these tactics in it, it would be so easy, but now that I know better, I'm using these tactics in my RN school, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it's more difficult because number one, I have more responsibility, <laughs> I work, and I'm married, and like I have bills, you know? So life gets in the way, but honestly, if you just stick to your plan, you will be great, okay? So hopefully I answered all of you guys' questions. Um, if you guys have more questions, let me know down in the comments below. Again, I'll be glad to answer them. Um, thank you guys again for watching. I love you guys so much. Thank you for just engaging with me. And our channel is growing, you guys. I remember last time it was at 300 subscribers. Girl, we're almost at 600. Could you believe that? I am a famous <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for the support. Again, share this video to all of your friends, all your nursing school friends, or just friends who are in college in general because they could use this advice as well. Again, I love you guys so much. Thank you for the support. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below because more hit videos are coming. And I also wanna do more vlogs as well. Um, my life is really hectic, but also it's very like, routine and boring <laughs> but i'm trying you guys i'm trying to do more vlogs i'm trying to be more interested and more multi-dimensional on this channel so if you guys are wanting to see vlogs as well let me know okay i'll make my life interesting for you guys because i love you guys that much again thank you guys so much for the support i love you and i'll see you guys in the next one bye <laughs>